Welcome to the Interval Zero video overview of monitoring and trace laser for RTX 64. In this video, we will show you how to analyze the runtime behavior of your real time applications using trace laser and monitoring session data output by the RTX 64 monitor utility. Trace laser was created by Persepio and has been integrated with the RTX 64 SDK for use with our runtime monitoring functionality. Tracealizer requires monitoring session output generated by the RTX64 monitor utility, which we will see in this video, or by using RT monitor control to enable monitoring programmatically. See the product documentation for advanced information on how to programmatically control monitoring. Since monitoring of data impacts real-time performance, monitoring is turned off by default. You can turn it on in the control panel in the change monitoring settings page. This page contains two checkbox options, which are separated to allow for deterministic starting and stopping of monitoring sessions. For this video, we'll choose the first option, Enable Instrumentation Only. This will require us to start our monitoring session manually through the monitor utility. Also on this page, you can set the default events to monitor by either checking or unchecking the events. Since the amount of events and frequency of logging is dependent on your application, the amount of resources used for internal monitoring buffers is configurable. If you are logging a larger number of frequent events, you may need to increase the memory used by monitoring. If you do not have enough memory when you view your monitoring results, you will see a data lost event, which indicates the internal monitoring buffers did not have enough space to log data as it was being generated. Once we've configured these monitoring settings, we need to start or restart the subsystem for the changes to take effect. Again, this won't start our monitoring session. It will only prepare the subsystem for monitoring. To start our session, we'll use the monitor utility later. Next, we'll look at a simple RTSS application we will later run and generate a monitoring session from using the monitor utility. For this video, I'm using the ping pong sample application. Looking at the code, we can see two threads that use an event to signal between one another. Later, we can look for this event in Tracealizer. Next, we'll launch the RTX64 monitor utility, which you can do directly from the Change Monitoring Settings page in the Control Panel. You can customize the events to collect in the session by checking or unchecking the event names. To get the most useful graphical results from Tracealizer, we recommend that you enable context switches. Note that doing this will potentially generate a lot of events. Note also that customizing events in the monitor utility overrides the default settings in the control panel. You can start a new session from the Start a Session page. This changes the status to Started and displays a subfolder name. A new session folder is created each time you start monitoring. With monitoring started, we'll run the ping pong sample we just looked at in Visual Studio. And after it runs to completion, We'll stop the session by clicking the stop button. The session folder is saved to this location by default. We can now open the session folder in Tracealizer by clicking File, Open Folder, and browsing for the session folder generated by the monitor utility. Note that Tracealizer must have access to the session folder. If this folder is on another machine, the tool will need to be able to access that directory or you must copy the complete monitoring session folder to the system running Tracealizer. When a session is open, Tracealizer displays the full high-level view of the session in the Trace view. Additional views available from the View menu provide focused views of session data in varying perspectives. We will look at a few of these later on. To the right of the Trace view is the Tool panel, which contains information on the selected actor, as well as controls for zooming in and out of the Trace view. The tool panel also contains the view filter, which allows you to control what data is visible in the trace view. For instance, I want to focus on the ping and pong threads from the sample that we looked at earlier. So I will filter the actor instances such that only those instances are shown. I will also turn on the display of kernel object events. The initial high level view is typically too broad to provide a useful view of the data you are interested in. You can use Tracealizer zooming and navigating options, such as control key and mouse wheel, to target a specific area of the session data to analyze. To understand Tracealizer, you must first understand two key concepts, actors and actor instances. 
An actor is a thread. Actors are represented by vertical bars of varying colors based on thread priority. An actor instance is an execution of an actor. This is the set of all fragments connected by the same colored band. It represents a single execution of the task which the actor or thread performs. You can view information on a specific actor in the tool panel. Expand or collapse the branches of the tree view to show more or less information as needed. When you double click on an actor, the actor instances window appears. This window lists all of the instances that are related to the selected actor and provides information for that actor, such as start and end time, execution time, and response time. Kernel events such as calls to kernel services and user events and raw events are displayed as text labels on the right side of the scheduling trace in the trace view. The color of the label indicates the event type. Raw events are detailed low-level monitoring framework events that contain data from the RTSS subsystem. It can be beneficial to show raw events as they contain additional data that Tracealyzer normally abstracts away, such as low-level handles and pointers. By default, raw monitoring events are included in the trace. However, in order to see these events in the trace view, you must turn on their display in the view filter tree located in the tool panel. Raw events are indicated by a teal color in the trace view. The text in a raw event matches the textual output from the RTX64 monitor utility. It's important to note that including raw events may significantly increase memory usage, as well as the time it takes for Tracealyzer to load. It also causes a duplication of events, as you end up with both the raw event and the kernel event. Custom events are another event type that you will likely want to see in Tracealyzer. Custom events are generated by the function rtGenerateEvent and are displayed as user events in Tracealyzer. In order to see custom events in the trace view, you must turn on their display in the view filter. To do this, select the user events checkbox. Custom events are indicated by the color yellow in the trace view. The settings menu contains options that allow you to define how custom events are displayed. You can determine how to handle all custom events that don't have individual parsing rules or specify a file that contains parsing rules for individual custom event kinds, overriding the default format. As we saw earlier, the view menu in Tracealyzer provides several focused views of session data in varying perspectives. For instance, the horizontal trace view shows a horizontal GAMP mode visualization of the actor execution trace. The CPU load graph displays CPU usage over time, per actor, and in total. By default, it shows all actors except the idle thread. Several actor instance graphs are available. These show execution time, response time, and wait time, among other helpful information. The event log displays events in a human-readable and exportable text format with powerful filtering tools. You can also use the event log to export the trace data in text format using the same filtering and formatting settings as in the current event log window. These views and the dozen others available in Tracealyzer provide a targeted view of the session event data, which can help you to identify elements in your real-time applications that require optimization and allow you to better understand more complex issues that cannot be analyzed through a typical debugging session. This concludes our video on RTX64 monitoring and Tracealyzer. For more information, see the product documentation installed with the RTX64 SDK and available online at www.intervalzero.com. Thanks for watching.